Hello everybody and welcome to our uh, webinar SRT, the IP protocol in Pro-AV uh, applications. Um, uh, great to see so many of you join today's webinar. Um, before we get started, I would like to, uh, to introduce uh, the host uh, or the guest that I have today. He's going to be able to talk to us uh, a lot more about uh, SRT and the SRT protocol. Uh, Suso Carrillo, the director of the SRT Alliance. Uh, Suso, welcome. Thank you so much, Steven. Um, Hello, and you're based you're based in Madrid and I'm seeing the sun is out there yeah exactly I'm based in Madrid indeed that's why my window is already closed because you know we have a lot of a lot, a lot of coronavirus here but also yes. a lot of sun a lot of yeah, sun well let's let's focus on the sun yeah. for now uh, let's focus <laughs> uh, on Susa, the sun. <laughs> yeah so so Suso prepared a presentation for today so we're going to be uh, be looking into that uh, uh, in just a couple of minutes uh, just wanted to introduce the agenda and a couple of other things so Suso will come back to you uh, in just a few minutes um, just uh, as a couple of uh, housekeeping things our webinar today is on the Demio platform uh, and as you can see next to me uh, there is a uh, Q&A and a chat window please use that for your uh, questions we have a team uh, on the Q&A on the chat today that will be able to answer your questions there um, before we get started if you're not familiar with uh, Avonic uh, we are a company founded about 13 years ago uh, background in AV distribution uh, and we are in control of product design, manufacturing, uh, warehousing, sales and support for a range of cameras varying from uh, uh, fixed installation cameras uh, that include PTZ and uh, um, uh, also fixed cameras but also for video conferencing and a number of other applications. Uh, currently we have about distribution in about uh, 30 different countries so we are present all over the world uh, and of course we team up with uh, technology partners uh, and that is the key of today's webinar. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, SRT for Pro AV applications. So, uh, what is the uh, position of SRT within our day to day applications in churches, uh, so house of worship, uh, live event registration, all those kind of things? Um, the first of all, I wanted to explain a little bit about why we decided to implement the SRT protocol in our products. Uh, then we're going to be looking at uh, Suso's presentation, uh, which is going to focus on uh, the SRT protocol, of course. You'll see it in action a little bit. Uh, we're going to be talking about the three major uh, topics or the three major problems or challenges that it addresses. Uh, we're going to be hearing a little bit more about the SRT alliance, about the adoption and the history of SRT. Uh, and also about uh, typical applications. So what kind of applications would benefit from using the SRT protocol? After that, I'm gonna summarize everything for you uh, in a couple of takeaway points. And also we're gonna be discussing our May and June webinars here in Avonic. Uh, at Avonic, uh, we, uh, we did a series in April and we are continuing that in May and June. Um, but before we get into uh, the SRT protocol, I kind of wanted to try to position the protocol uh, for you in uh, which part of the IP or AV over IP world does it sit? Um, the question that you probably have at the top of your head is like yet another IP protocol, great, another acronym that I need to remember. Uh, yes, but it has its position uh, inside of uh, the uh, pro AV space, but in specific applications. So before we start talking about that, I wanted to go back to what we all know, the traditional AV, which is HDMI, HDBSD based matrix switching, typically systems which are in the same room or in the same building that focus on close to zero latency, although HDMI also uh, has some latency, uh, use very high bandwidth over dedicated cabling and are very much standardized, right? That's what we know today. Of course, there's a lot of um, uh, information, a lot of marketing information, a lot of technical information going back and forth over AV over IP. Uh, the thing with AV over IP, the terminology is not very clear. The, uh, the term AV over IP only really says something that uh, you're carrying audio and video uh, in some kind of transportation method over the highway and that's all it specifies. So it just specifies the infrastructure and it specifies the what, but it leaves a lot of other uh, things out of there which are in the details uh, basically. Within AV over IP, uh, there's a big fight going on or, or yeah, there's a struggle going on between SDVOE, uh, JPEG 2000 based applications uh, and even uh, the HDB, HDBST alliance that's uh, coming up with new products. Uh, and you're talking about sub milliseconds to like 30 milliseconds of delay in these type of applications. The bandwidth, depending on which solution, is always about six, 700 uh, megabits per second. So from a can this exist on an uh, existing or can this be streamed on an existing network? 
The answer is theoretically, yes, in daily practice, very, very challenging. Um, and therefore, if you look at the, like the third uh, pillar in this uh, overview, the single distribution, uh, which is terminology coming more from the broadcast industry, to be honest, but it's more about um, um, uh, low bandwidth, uh, high compression schemes, very effective use of bandwidth, uh, where yes, there's a little bit more latency, but typically if you look at moving video, such as like my camera uh, image right now, uh, that you can perfectly distribute this using uh, higher compression standards. And this pillar is where uh, there's a lot of interoperability. It's been around for many years. Terms like H.264 and H.265 are very common and they are very cost effective. If you look um, uh, behind me, there's, uh, there's two pictures. Uh, and clearly the, uh, the video that you're seeing here is a lot easier to compress as the actual Excel sheet that you're seeing here. So for images like these, uh, lecture capture, uh, house of worship type applications, uh, the uh, single distribution uh, uh, encoding schemes are very, very useful. The key is just to select the right one for your application, which depends again on the compression difficulty, the latency demands and the budget. Just to give you an idea, lecture capture in a, in a university, for instance, the latency from the actual room to the lecture capture system is not a very specific topic. It's not important what kind of latency there is, but there are other requirements which SRT uh, addresses very well. Um, we're seeing end-to-end -end, uh, latencies of 50 milliseconds, depending on which systems we look at, um, based on these open H.264 and H.265 standards. So don't get distracted by the fact that like, well, you, when you use these, you always have three seconds of latency. This is simply not true. Um, like I said, we've decided to, uh, to implement the SRT protocol uh, in our new range of PTZ cameras, the CM70 line. Um, these have uh, SRT uh, with uh, additional license that you can uh, purchase from us. Uh, these cameras can, are available in 12, 20 and 30 times zoom. They are fully IP capable uh, and come with, about, uh, come with three years of warranty and have multiple uh, 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 control options, including R232, 485, but also via IP. Uh, they have HDMI and SDI plus IP as well, so make them very, very flexible for uh, our, uh, our yeah, wide range of applications. So that's about why we at Avonic, uh, when we learned about the SRT protocol, uh, believe that this is a very promising protocol for Pro-AV, although it's coming more from the broadcast side of the business. It's uh, a protocol that uh, comes from a company called High Vision. Uh, you're probably familiar with, uh, uh, with them. Um, uh, and um, um, Suso uh, knows a lot more about the protocol. Um, so, so just, just, just very quickly, the, the, um, um, the protocol comes more from the broadcast industry. Uh, can, you, um, yeah. can you explain us a little bit more about how that fits into Pro-AV, which is probably like where your whole presentation surrounds uh, uh, is basically about. But uh, I think that's the key for the day, just to kind of figure out how does the SRT protocol originally coming from more the broadcast industry, how does that fit in our Pro-AV applications? Well, one of the greatest things with with SRT it's it's, like, it's that it is uh, built to work um, with live video streaming over unpredictable networks such as the internet. And the great thing is that that's exactly what uh, the workflow for the pro AV industry. So right now we can see that in the broadcast industry there is a lot of video streaming, but it's, uh, it's something that is happening right now. We, we can see the what is happening with the news today, with mobile journalism and that kind of things. For sure, also the OTT platforms, but for pro AB industry, uh, it's uh, it's like the regular uh, workflow to you know to stream uh, video over unpredictable networks, such as the internet or such as you know. Uh, local networks with not much bandwidth. Yeah, absolutely. Although local networks seem like an easy, uh, an easy thing to use. Uh, if you look at large organizations, they can be uh, multiple generations of switchers and, and infrastructure. So, um, Susa, yeah. I guess with, without further ado, I want to hand it over to you um, to tell us a little bit more Great. about SRT and about the, the background. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so on the, on the very beginning, um, SRT was uh, created by High Vision 
uh, as I told before, to solve issues with live uh, video workload over unpredictable networks such as the internet. Okay, right now it is an open an open source protocol. There is a lot of uh, companies contributing. High Vision is the leader, but it's not just the, the only the only company uh, that is uh, contributing to this protocol. And that's great because there is a lot of expertise building the, the next steps. Um, one of the great things with SRP is about uh, image quality. So uh, it's so important when, when building this protocol, one of the things that the engineering team have in mind is to get the, the, the better quality and that's uh, something that SRT get it from a recreating packet loss uh, signals with an overcoming jitter and and that kind of things also it's content agnostic so you can use it as a transport layer to uh, you know to transport any codec you want such H264, HCBC, or you know, metadata, video, and that's great for also for ProEV at HCBC and H264 are two of the main uh, codecs used in the in the industry. Another um, fact is about security. You are um, working with video in an unmanaged network, so that video must be secure. It's Indeed, it's like to put a cable from an input to an output. That's it's exactly the same security that SRT can offer to to your to your streaming. And on the firewall caller, uh, on the sorry, on the firewall side, so also can be can be used as a caller or say or a listener. You know whether the whether the use case. And which, is, which, is the which is the firewall traversal, if I remember correctly, right? Which means that you can kind of circumvent uh, certain firewalls that are present. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. So let's see SRT in action. This is a, a real example. On the, on the left, we can see a, a live source. In the middle, we can see the video uh, uh, live stream with H263, uh, sorry, H264 over UDP with uh, 4 megabits bitrate and 2% packet loss. Okay, and we can see some issues in the image. And on the right, it's the, the SRT streaming uh, signal with less bandwidth, almost the almost half bandwidth is uh, 2.7 megabits with the same uh, packet loss. And you can see that the quality, you know, the signal is so smooth and the quality is uh, it's it's perfect indeed. That's the great thing that it was created for broadcasting because, you know, in, in the broadcast industry, mm, there can be a, a second of, with a black signal or, or artifacts or something like that. So the SRT protocol and talking from starting from a broadcasting perspective but it's, it's, it's something that also applies to pro AV solve three three major problems um, the ultimately vision of the of the protocol was to replace satellite private networks but also proprietary solutions to so make it also most cost effective more reliable and try to you know uh, Simplify. That it's something that it's that it's kids. Uh, SRT indeed is it's so flexible. Also, um, this protocol also seeks to replace, sorry, the RTMP protocol and solve uh, problems concerning uh, high latency and high bandwidth utilis uh, utilization, especially when used in large video co contribution video because it is not the same to contribute the video signal in a local uh, network than when you are, you know, starting in a country and and uh, contributing to, to another one. And for sure, to enable uh, secure streaming uh, workflows over public networks and in the near future to allow and enable also cloud workflows. Okay, nowadays vendors are developing 
microservices based on cloud systems. And well, we are at the very beginning of, of this, but SFT can also fit uh, there. Okay, let's go to the next one. And so once the, the protocol was created from an engineering perspective and Hivision decided to make it open source, then uh, Hivision created the SRT Alliance, okay? That is the, the organization where all the SRT adopters, all the companies using SRTs uh, lives and uh, try to boost marketing activities or just, you know, to share information or to get knowledge. There is no need to share information, but you can also get knowledge uh, from the SRT community. Right now we are uh, more than 350 companies. It's very simple to join. And obviously, uh, High Vision and also Microsoft, uh, we are together oh, leading list. this. Yeah, it's a big list. Uh, Abonic is, is there indeed. Yeah. And, you know, uh, one of the main functions I say is to enhance marketing and also constant, 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 well, sorry, consistent messaging, you know, uh, yeah. across the business over, over the SRT protocol. Okay. What is this? Okay, so this is the origin. That, that was, that was uh, exactly my question as well. What is what, what am I looking at? Yeah, exactly. So this, uh, you know, uh, in 2012, uh, two high vision executives called Peter Mack, that is uh, the chief marketing officer and Mark Simonkowski, VP of, of engineering, you know, was uh, drinking some wine in, in Montreal and they were discussing about the creepy idea that they write uh, in this, uh, you know, in this cardboard from a wine bottle. Indeed, this is the original SRT diagram. Peter Mack has this in, 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 his, in his house. And the original idea that they wanted to, you know, to achieve was uh, that, that, that I, said, I told you before is to send video signal over any unpredictable network with secure and quality okay and so it's, it's uh, great uh, that you know this is the first srt srt diagram okay and in the next one we can see uh, a timeline with the momentum of of the both srt protocol and the srt alliance as we can see uh high vision invented it in 2012 and the company presented this this protocol in IBC 2013. In the next year, Hivision developed uh, several equipment such as uh, SRT encoders that are, co are actually called materials and they already exist uh, nowadays on, on SRT gateways, for, su for sure, modern versions of, of that. That right now, uh, they are top sellers in the in the SRT ecosystem. Then in in twenty in twenty seventeen, uh, High Vision decided to open source uh, the SRT protocol, and the SRT Alliance was was born. born. Um, in that year, we saw important companies joining from the very beginning. You know, uh, and indeed some uh, companies such as PLC and FFmpeg that maybe most of you. Uh, uh, no, also from the open source uh, space came aboard, and um, a huge moment uh, for the SRT Alliance and the SRT, and SRT, and for sure, High Vision as a company was in last year when uh, we we uh, we win we won sorry we won uh, any award for the SRT protocol. Um, right now. Uh, you know, the SRT Alliance is growing and growing every every single week. I think I think one thing, uh, Susa, I wanted to mention is that, uh, and and and, and I, I spent a few years in the broadcast industry myself. One of the yeah. differences between the pro AV world and 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 the broadcast world is that interoperability and protocols that are being adopted by multiple vendors is is very common. It's been. Uh, many years of encoding exactly. and decoding shootouts and, and, and all those kind of things. And of course, there's Eurovision or the EBU that kind of drives that whole interoperability uh, thing, um, which has been very beneficial for the uh, for the broadcast industry, right? Um, 
one of my uh, one of my early observations when I kind of came back to the Pro AV uh, world was the interoperability. Uh, it's still mostly like one box and another box from the same vendor, uh, and that's what yeah. we definitely like about the SRT protocol, right? The SRT protocol being open. It kind of opens up a lot more uh, um, possibilities and creates interoperability automatically. Exactly, exactly. That is in, indeed one of the of the of the of the activities that we make in the in the SFT Alliance is to make uh, uh, something, something that we call plug test. That is where different vendors can um, test the interoperability within their equipment. In, 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 indeed, some of them. Could be even competitors, you know. But but it is great because we are all like in in the same track, you know, and getting benefits from a technology that is on top. Yeah, definitely. Okay, and so uh, this is a Pro AV webinar, uh, and this is some of the of the applications that. Uh, you can get from from SRT, you know, in campus distribution, all that unreliable links between buildings. We can find a lot of old infrastructure, and for sure that we need uh, secure communications, okay, uh, or streaming directly from a camera to a streaming media servers, or setting up an SRT stream feeding electric capture form for sure can be on the cloud and that's great because uh, as i told before sft is uh, prepared you know to those workflows that it are going to come in the future and they are going to be deployed over the over the cloud for sure and obviously it's a great input to production software such as uh, beaming or obs and uh, well in the in the broadcast uh, market it's great because there is a lot of applications right now remote production, mobile journalism, making interviews, even in in house of worship also that it's another 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 industry. Uh, High Vision has also some products uh, based on, on SRT because it's an industry that it's uh, mostly based also on streaming and makes uh, perfect sense. Yeah, we, we, we've already seen the demand uh, for SRT in, the, uh, in, in setups for House of Worship, uh, where customers are clearly looking for, uh, for a way to have reliable and secure connections. I think in general, yeah. um, if, if, if you look at GDPR, uh, all those kind of things, right? Uh, putting an open multicast on the local network is just not going to cut it. Uh, and, uh, and SRT adds, adds the content security, and it does that with, uh, I think, uh, AES 128 and Unit 256. Uh, which is, exactly. uh, I've been told once that 256 will take you two years to uh, descramble, I think. Uh, so secure enough, definitely, for those applications. Hmm. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Okay, let's go to the to the next one. And this is the, you know, the latest uh, news on, on SRT. First of all, you know, the SRT Alliance continue growing. Abonic is one of the names that from your industry, from the pro AV industry, that it's in, uh, and, but for sure there is joining another company such as Stata Communication, DB Sport, or Edgeware, that it's a company focused on, on OTT, on the OTT environment. So it's a kind of different uh, industry, and it's great. And I've, I've, year, I've, uh, uh, yeah. I, I've seen a couple of other names on your, uh, on your list of all the logos. I think uh, like BrightSign, for instance, as a digital signage. Uh, manufacturers yeah. is, is is interesting. They can take in uh, SRT streams, or they can think and feed out SRT streams. Uh, I think also uh, uh, Wowza as uh, as one of the uh, streaming media server What's providers that, that that can take in SRT directly, which is a lot of uh, like service companies they use Wowza streaming media servers. Uh, but also, like you said, the VMix and OBS, right, uh, which are great tools our industry is using uh, more and more also for Pro AV applications. So. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. the, the growing group of, of companies uh, is definitely, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's making us excited about SRT. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's great because, you know, the, it's like the, the, the whole world and, 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 and a lot of different industries are definitely going to digital video to video streaming video. So that's why there is, it, this is not just about broadcast, this is about video. That is the, you know, it's something that is uh, important to notice. And that's why there is a lot of companies from different industries 
joining, you know, from Pro AV, broadcast, OTT, streaming, for sure, defense, also House of Worship, and that kind of things. And the last thing of is that High Vision uh, launched this year the SRT Hub, that it's going to to be a microservices platform built and deployed over the over the cloud. That's all. Okay. 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 So if if we okay, want to get so more information about SRT, uh, Suso, is there are there like any are there any website? I see a couple of links here in the screen already. But what's what's like the go to yeah, the uh, go to resources for SRT? Exactly. So in the in the SRT Alliance uh, website, you can find a lot of resources and also a deployment guide, a technical deployment guide. And but this is the link, you know, to join the SRT Alliance. It's a straightforward process. It's it's so easy. Also, the technical conversation it's happening in, in Slack, okay. And this is the the link to join the, that channel. There is all the companies, members of the SRT Alliance, all the SRT open source contributors, and a lot of companies that are not from the, those both both walls, but want to know about this, are 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 in, are are in that Slack channel, you know, having some discussions. And for sure, feel free to mail me with any inquiries or any additional info you need. Okay, perfect. Um, questions, of course, are right. welcome in the in the in the chat window. Uh, and w like I said before, we have uh, a team from uh, or a couple of people from SRT and from Avonic uh, that are closely monitoring that, so they will try to answer your questions as soon as possible. Uh, also, if if there's any questions that we haven't answered, we will do that um, uh, after the webinar, of course, because you'll receive a follow up from us. Um, Suso, I, I wanted to thank you for your contribution today. Uh, very insightful and, and, and glad that uh, the SRT Alliance is growing. Uh, we're excited to be a part of it uh, and hopefully we were able to clarify a few things. Uh, so thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity, Steven. Thank you so much for okay. everybody. Okay. Um, so yeah, Suso, uh, the director of the uh, SRT Alliance. Um, and I just wanted to talk to you about a couple of takeaway points from this presentation uh, today. So um, uh, we have SRT supported in our CM70, uh, CM71 and CM73 cameras, which means 12, uh, 20 and 30 times zoom cameras with IP functionality, including the SRT protocol. Um, security. Uh, that's that's the thing that SRT brings. It brings AES-128 and 256 content encryption, makes it reliable to traverse either local networks or uh, even internet uh, type distribution. Um, reliability, uh, it has something built, uh, built in called ARQ, automatic repeat request, which detects the network performance between the endpoints and uh, copes with packet loss. Recovery up to certain limits, of course, but uh, still a lot reliable than a normal link. Um, it simplifies things, it traverses firewalls, so you don't need to worry about uh, a lot of firewall issues. Uh, and one thing I wanted to add is uh, low latency. Uh, we've actually tested SRT uh, here in our webinar studio. Uh, it is very, very quick. Um, uh, there's not huge latencies, uh, although some uh, other vendors might try to get you to believe that there's a lot of latencies involved with H.264 and HEVC H.265. That is simply not true. What we like is the interoperability behind it. So there's a lot of other companies that are building uh, solutions with SRT uh, decoding built in, for instance, OBS and vMix, but also BrightSign, Wowza Streaming Media Service, and many more, as uh, Suso showed us uh, the list of all the companies that are joining the SRT Alliance. Uh, our CM70 models are equipped with the SRT caller and listener modes. There are actually three. We support two of those. Uh, and again, it's interoperable with many vendors, which is definitely what we like about the SRT protocol. Um, this, is our, this was our uh, SRT uh, webinar about how SRT fits within Pro AV applications. Uh, we know very well that there's a lot of uh, AV over IP standards. There's a lot of acronyms, all those things. Of course, if you have any questions, always feel free to contact us uh, and, and let us know. A recording of this webinar will, of course, be made available to you uh, since you've joined this webinar. Uh, and we also have a whole list of product videos available via our YouTube channel. If you need any information about how to get a demo unit or how to get a unit uh, or a BTZ camera from Avonic with SRT enabled, uh, contact your local reseller or take a look at our website. 
uh, which is avonic.eu. And we have more webinars to come um, in May and June. Uh, the next one we're going to be doing is on Tuesday, May 29th. Uh, it's also going to be at 11 at 4 o'clock CET time zone. Uh, and we're going to be joined by Roland Pro AV. Um, they've uh, designed and uh, developed uh, a few products that have PTZ camera control built in, which is fully interoperable with Avonic. And we're going to be looking on how do you how do you take all the, the parts, the audio and the video parts, uh, and how do you do everything into one mixer? That's, that's going to be on Tuesday, May 29th. And if you want to sign up for the webinars, avonic.eu slash webinars. Thank you so much for joining our uh, webinar on SRT. Uh, I hope uh, this was insightful for you and there's more webinars to follow in uh, May and June and I hope to see you soon.